Welcome to Season 1, Episode 7 of Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and I don't know what we're going to talk about today, so this will be a bit of a ramble after the ad. Thank you. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast, episode 37. This is just going to be a ramble. Uh, we're in the, uh, we're in the in-between place. We're in the void. Uh, we are in the liminal space between, um, the Trump White House and a second Trump administration or more likely a Biden administration. Uh, all I have to do is give the awards out for it being the best hearts and mind hearts and minds warfare uh, war I've ever seen in my entire life. The complete and utter sabotage by the Biden administration and by the mainstream and all y'all and all of us together, kind of just willing through force of will willing trump away has been a master class in in uh hearts and minds war it's uh it's amazing how completely in the rear view trump is globally even though uh it's not official yet and there's going to be a lot of Kissing and moaning be before this is over, but it won't matter because the process will not be uh, will not be covered. It will not be honored. It will not be attended to. It will not be analyzed outside of um, uh, the allegations being dismissed out of hands out of hand. Um, even though there are plenty of examples of very similar types of uh of of election wins in other countries you know and there definitely have been you know this entire uh biden win comes from a place where america could never and would never and has never and will never have a uh a corrupt uh election that Election fraud is, uh, has been, and will always be in America an impossibility. And even if it is a possibility, it's so rare and difficult to manifest that uh, even suggesting that the election was either rigged or uh, fraudulent or corrupted and so forth can result in secondary effects that would be so destructive to America's um, national security that it is not even worth pursuing uh, because it will undermine not only the reputation of, of the United States, but it'll also make uh, the United States vulnerable to uh, foreign hostile actors, to enemy, to 9-11 events, to terrorism events, to um, and and even more nefarious that if Trump is able to take back the White House from what might end up being perceived by uh, the Supreme Court as being a uh, illegitimate election, then what are the secondary effects? Like what what is the how how will the Trump White House? suffer that win because if a first administration was so completely and utterly um tarred and feathered so completely um weighed down 
and slowed down and gummed up as it was by just about everybody who felt um, actually physical pain with regards to having so and so embarrassing, incompetent, selfish, narcissistic, jingoistic, racist, xenophobic, white supremacist, Nazi, Hitler, etc. Um, oh, despotic. Um, it, the list goes on and on. So embarrassing uh, that all of. Uh, of Biden's and uh, and Harris's flaws are glossed over. Um, as far as anybody's concerned, they're saviors in comparison. And like someone online was saying the other day, um, you know, it's okay to be married to someone who is funny and sexy and charming and handsome and who uh, goes abroad uh, as... Um, as a JSOC operative to kill people in foreign deserts. But when he comes back, he's a beautiful, charming, intelligent uh, stud. And it's much easier to, um, to be married to a charming killer than it is to be uh, married to a uh, extremely embarrassing, obese, pathetic foolish, it perceived insane, uh, um, pacifist. Uh, so, I mean, it really doesn't matter. The hearts and minds war is one. It doesn't matter whether or not there is a legitimate path to the White House. If that happens, then the entire, uh, the Trump card, if you will, if Trump is able to get reelected, the Trump card will be that this entire election is illegitimate. And what is the next step there? So, uh, nothing good can happen except for Biden and Harris to win. The only, the only outcome where. The only outcome is the outcome where uh, possible fraud and possible vote tampering is ignored in the general health for the general health of a of a less appalled, less apoplectic, less freaking out, more placid more acceptable, less bombastic, less challenging, less embarrassing globally outcome uh, that Biden and Harris would offer. And because, I mean, to be honest, uh, Biden and Harris are, are corporatists. They're, they're neolibs. They are uh, very literally part of the system. I mean, it's not going to affect anybody or anything in any spectacular way. It'll just be less embarrassing for a great number of people who had it in their head that uh, Donald Trump was literally Hitler, literally Pol Pot, literally Satan, literally the Antichrist, literally Stalin, literally Nazis, literally white supremacist. Literally all of these terrible things that I personally, oh, and literally a mass murderer with a personal murder death toll of 200, at least 250,000 healthy, innocent Americans now empty chairs at empty tables. So, like I said, is the most, I mean, people have compared this to a, uh, a color revolution. I don't even know what that is. Hey, Google, what is a color revolution? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. 
Worldwide media use the term color revolution to describe various related movements that developed in several countries of the former Soviet Union, in the People's Republic of China and in the Balkans during the early 21st century. Alexa, what is a color revolution? According to Wikipedia, worldwide media use the term color revolution to describe various related movements that developed in several countries of the former Soviet Union, in the People's Republic of China and in the Balkans during the early 21st century. The term has also been applied to a number of revolutions elsewhere, including in the Middle East and in the Asia-Pacific region, dating from the 1980s to the 2010s. Alexa, can you tell me more about color revolutions? According to Wikipedia, worldwide media use the term Alexa, color stop. revolution to... Do anyway, I don't know what it means, uh, but that's the word going around. So who knows? I doubt that... Uh, I doubt that associate... Uh, Justice is the associates associates justice Alito is going to um, is going to make much uh, um, much of a stir. We'll see if uh, if Justice Thomas is going to make much of a stir. It'll be interesting to see if the conservative judges on the Supreme Court make much of a stir. Um, hey Google, when is the Electoral College finalized? I heard, when is the Electoral College finalized? Sorry, I couldn't find any up-to-date news. Anyway, I believe that the final uh, official Electoral College votes are going to happen in December. So it'll be interesting. I mean, like I said, it's such a done deal with regards to um, Biden and Harris, that um, it's actually fun to watch Stephen Colbert again. It's fun to watch the late night shows again. It's fun to be part of popular culture again, because I don't feel this grating that, I mean, the grading that I feel has nothing to do as to whether or not Trump is a bad man. I mean, Trump is not a good man. It has to do with how low and and pathetic and sad and, and, and rotten and just just like lowest common denominator disgusting uh, people who I love and respect both in the media and uh, on NPR and uh, on Facebook and Twitter, how they've behaved um, to the point where it's going to be really hard for me to forgive them, their behavior. I mean, I know that they don't care whether I forgive them or not, but I feel like they have behaved appallingly, disgustingly, and uh, based on just any number of series of bald-faced lies. I mean, just a little scratch into... Um, any one of the propagandic lies that have been aimed at Trump over the last four years in support of his desecration, um, any a scratch on any of them would have shown that they were standard operating procedures before Trump hit the White House or um, um, pesky state laws pesky national laws, pesky um, U.S. constitutional laws. I mean, you know, I don't want to blame everything on Obama, but I'm not going to blame anything on Obama. I'm going to blame everything on standard operating procedures. I mean, America, as far as I, as far as I remember back to, has effectively treated uh, immigrants and refugees and uh, guest workers as as a slave class. I mean, I don't think America wants to change that. I think that uh, it's not so much that America wants to keep immigrants out of America like Trump says he does, but America wants to let them in and maintain their uh, second or third class 
citizenship, which means they are illegal and anybody at any time could have them physically removed. Uh, and that, you know, could thwart things like organizing, can thwart things like unionizing, can thwart things like standing up for their own for their own selves. I mean, to be honest, uh, uh, the uh, the dreamers are are a cross section of of pretty uh, future successful. Um, second generation, first generation immigrants who have gone through the paperwork required to, you know, according to NPR, go to Harvard, Yale, Princeton, and so forth, and stay here um, as positive role models and also voters. Um, however, really, uh, the underclass is what needs to be treated better in America. And I feel like uh, there's not a whole hell of a lot of goodwill towards really enabling this underclass of people who are treated like uh, treated as badly as any undocumented worker. Um, and uh, there's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of do what I say, not what I do and so forth. And I'm not saying in any way uh, that Trump is um, any type of savior in this regard. He's just painfully more honest about what his true motives are. And those true motives are are appalling, right? They're against everything that I believe that the Statue of Liberty is about. Because I believe uh, what the poem says. Let's see if I can get someone to read it to me. Alexa, can you read me the poem from the Statue of Liberty? Here's something I found on the web. According to reference.com, the Statue of Liberty is inscribed with the poem The New Colossus, written by Emma Lazarus in 1883. Hey Google, can you read me The New Colossus? I couldn't find the new Colossus, but you can check Listen out the, to the new Colossus with an Audible Premium Store. Plus membership. Here's what you get for just $14.95 per month, your choice of one title to keep each month from everything Audible offers. In addition, enjoy listening to the thousands of titles included in the Audible Plus catalog. Membership automatically renews at $14.95 per month plus tax. Cancel anytime. Terms in your Alexa app. Would you like to start an Audible Premium Plus membership? No. Okay, here's a sample. If you change your mind, just ask me to join Audible. This is Audible. Audible Studios presents The New Colossus, a novel. Written by Marshall Goldberg. Alexa, stop. Hey, Google, show me the poem The New Colossus. According to Wikipedia, The New Colossus is a sonnet by American <clears throat> poet Emma Lazarus. She wrote the poem in 1883 to raise money. Uh, well, anyway, you know what it says. Let's see if I can read it to you now. I'll read it to you right after the next break. The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gate shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command. 
the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she, with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Yay! Take two, the new Colossus by Emma Lazarus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows the worldwide welcome her mild eyes command. The air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she. With silent lips, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I love that, love that poem. And that is what I believe America to be, not the closed wall, closed door uh, system of government. However, you know, my, uh, my great-grandparents all came through Ellis Island. Uh, half of them came from uh, Austro-Hungary, slash Czechoslovakia, and the other half came from Ireland. And uh, if they didn't make it through, they would have been sent back. They had to come through uh, the rigmarole of, uh, of immigration policy, right? So none of them snuck in and then hoped for the best. So I guess there needs to be borders and there needs to be laws, but there also needs to be a viable, friendly, neighborly, compassionate path into anyway we're done getting back uh right after the break and we'll be shutting down and closing down and finishing up and sharing how to get a hold of me right after this this pause <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast. My name is Chris Abraham, and this is the end of the podcast. You can reach me at Chris Abraham on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. You can reach me at Chris at No Agenda Show. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com, my website. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. I love to say that the only way I could get my last name, who happens to be a prophet uh, for three religions, how I ever could get one uh, with a dot TLD, uh, top-level domain, Abraham dot something, is to go back and get it from the godless former nation, former United Territory of the Soviet Union. So I got Abraham.su, which stands for Soviet Union, which I think is freaking cool. Uh, you can also text me at plus one two zero two three five two 
5051. Uh, you can call me there, but I won't answer unless you've made a scheduled date with me. You can do that at calendly.com slash Chris Abraham slash 30 or slash 15. And uh, what else? I'm linkedin.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. And I think that's it. Please like, subscribe, uh, review, star, up, thumbs up, uh, comment, or anything else on your uh, your podcast platform of choice. And I really look forward to you coming back for my next podcast and or listening to all the podcasts before this one. And I'll talk to you soon next time. Aloha, mahalo, ciao. Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you.